Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Just gonna peek and make sure, oh, we're rolling, oh good. Ah, I feel like I've forgotten how to put makeup on because I haven't since last week at our Sat Chat. And last week's Sat Chat was the most popular viewed, the most uh, the most viewed Saturday chat and also the most commented on. That was uh, so much wonderful um, uh, comments, so many wonderful insights uh, on last week's topic, which was that Consumer Crafts was closing down and um, and you can go check that out if you want to and see what your friends in the comments had to say. Uh, many people mentioned that, um, that you know, a lot of people aren't shopping because the, you know, they're, they may have lost a job or they may just be uncertain or a spouse has lost a job. Other people said that um, they probably had a hard time getting inventory in since China was, um, had the kind of the uh, first wave of the coronavirus and then things have, you know, also not all factories have been up to, up to, um, up to running and one co uh, viewer had a very interesting comment saying that the reason the art supply stores are probably doing pretty good and craft supply stores are struggling uh, one reason is that most uh, high-end art supplies are made in the United States and Europe and most craft supplies are made in China and that made complete sense and uh, um, I thought that was really insightful so there was a lot of really interesting um, comments some people said um, well most places are had to be closed, so obviously um, consumer crafts would be struggling, but they were an online store. They happened to be owned, the company was owned by Michael, so. Um so yeah, I still don't know exactly why they closed. It's such a bummer. Um, but you know, there's also, I also read some articles that you guys shared with me about Michael's having financial struggles and it could be a, a like kind of last ditch effort to shore up other parts of their business. So there you go. Watch last week's video if you don't know what I'm talking about and read the comments because there's a lot of really smart people in the community that had a lot of things to say. So I found it very interesting and I wanna thank everybody who left comments. I always enjoy the conversation that we have after these sat chats. Um, so this week, um, it's been a busy week. It's uh, it's actually Saturday night right now when I'm recording this. It's about um, it's about six fifteen or six thirty. I'm considering that night. I'm done with this week. Saturday night. <laughs> Some people call that afternoon. I've already had dinner. Actually, I haven't. I had a vegan ice cream cone because um, honestly. I don't think I cooked dinner all week. This has been a crazy week. I've been in a, a bad mood. I've been stressed out. Uh, it's just been one of those, one of those stressy, stressy, stressy weeks. I left the house in a car um, several times. I do not recommend, but um, we finally got our dental appointments, our dental cleanings rescheduled because they were scheduled like right before, well, they were, they were due to happen like that week that everything locked down. Um, I try to get everyone's scheduled. It's five of us. I try to get everybody's like, on within a couple of days of each other so I know we're all due to have our teeth cleaned at the same time every six months and um and I and I schedule it I usually schedule it far in advance because I hate going to the dentist I hate going to the doctor I honestly think you know animal rights obviously is the reason I became a vegetarian when I was a kid but um I think that what keeps me on the vegan diet and the exercising every day is the fact that I want to avoid as much medical intervention in my life as possible. So, uh, so yeah, definitely, it's it's the, it's the fear factor keeping me on the straight and narrow here. Um, but anyways, my my teeth were fine. Um, uh, one of my daughters had a um, had a sensitivity to heat heat, so we're gonna go see somebody to have it like a nerve checked. The X-ray looked fine, but. Um, but, you know, and that was stressing me out because I don't like any sort of medical unrest at all. And so, you know, you're probably like, Lindsay's the tooth, get over yourself, you know, look at what people have to deal with. I know, I know, I'm just ridiculous, but I just get really stressed out. And sometimes I'm in that mood where everything just stresses me out. And, you know, you could just, you know, somebody could say something to me and that will just send me on this like cascade of worry. And um, it doesn't matter what reality is when I'm in those moods, I'm just going to worry about everything. I'm going to be, you know, just restless and just feel like I can't start anything because I don't have the focus. I'm very unfocused this week. And so what I ended up doing, um, and I did this last night because I was just so frustrated with myself because it's like I couldn't seem to get anything done. I, I had so much to do and I just felt like everything I I go to start something and then I notice something else that needs to be done and then I go to the other thing and I was just so scattered I was like bouncing around like a pinball in a pinball machine um so what I did last night was I just I made a list I didn't even have a note notebook in my night in my nightstand which is very unusual so I had my phone so I went in one of my apps and I just started making a list like the the same app I would used to do a shopping list and then today as I thought of things I added it to the list instead of just like stopping what I'm doing because I walk into the kitchen to get like a cup of tea 
to take a break and I noticed the kitchen's a mess and I start cleaning the kitchen. I turn on the tea kettle, but then I start cleaning the kitchen. I forgot that I was going to have tea and then I'm taking things to other rooms. And then before I know it, like I still haven't had my caffeine and I'm just like, I've, you know, kind of, you know, half butted all these different projects and nothing looks done and I'm just frustrated with myself. So I just started writing things down on the list as I came to them. And then when I'd have enough time to tackle a project, that's what I did. Um, so this actually brings me to a topic uh, that I was going to talk about last week, but as you know, the big, you know, closing of one of my favorite craft stores that took precedent on the topics. And I'm glad I talked about that because it was, it really resonated with you guys apparently because you all engaged and, and chit chatted back and it was really, it just, it just, I think it's nice. I think it's nice just to, just to talk with people and to hear people's opinions and to, you know, have human <laughs> interaction, even if it's just in the comments under a video. Um, so anyway, one of the things I wanted to talk about last week, I was having a very like a uh, normal week last week, this week, I don't know, every, every few weeks, I'm just, I have a crazy week where I'm just feeling like, ugh, just lazy, awful, depressed, just blah, you know, I mean, see, I'm not having sunshine and rainbows all the time, you know, there's, there's the scale, there's the scale, I think we all, we all have the scale, and on one end of it is like sunshine and rainbows, and on the other end of it is the ending scene in the film and Louise, and we like, you know, we kind of <laughs> ebb and flow in there, and you know, <laughs> you know, some weeks I'm planning my midlife crisis other times everything's fine <laughs> um so i think we all have a little bit of that uh that that in us and uh that's all right you know we just have to we just have to roll with it one thing that helps me when i'm feeling like that because it's usually just this this overarching feeling of doom and just disappointment in myself and uh by putting that list by putting a list together like that and every time i can check one of those things off my list whether it's a paper list or an app on my phone i feel so much better it's like it kind of helps me climb out of the hole that you know i've been like working digging myself into all week um so one thing i wanted to i wanted to an idea if you will that i want to put out there is to do nice things for future you because i think a lot of the time we don't put ourselves first i mean you know if you have a family you've got to put your children first you have to put um your spouse first at certain times you know you're not you can't you can't be selfish you have to do a lot of things for other people you have jobs you have obligations and you have to do these things but a lot of times we just we neglect the things that we do for ourselves whether it be exercise or maybe it's reading a book that you've really been looking forward to or taking 10 minutes to sip a cup of tea and flip through a magazine or something like that we kind of put those things off because they're not urgent they're important they're very important but they're not urgent so um one thing that that has helped me change my mindset about that and uh, i think i heard about it in the book of awesome which i read a few years ago and then there's a sequel to that book but anyway um they talk about past you and future you and don't you hate it when you get up in the morning and like the kitchen's a mess and the, the sink is full of dirty dishes and you're like Ugh! and whenever i see that i go oh past me past Lindsay, why did you do this to me but then you can do something nice for for future you like something i do that's nice for future Lindsay is i will um fill the coffee maker and get it ready so all i have to do is hit the button in the morning when i get up so then i'm like oh thanks past Lindsay. you've made coffee for me you know i know it's kind of silly but if you think of think of things in terms of like past you and future you i think that can kind of help so if you think i'm gonna i'm gonna clear off the coffee table and i'm gonna put these things away because um it's only gonna take me five minutes and future me is gonna be so happy in the morning you know just think of like future you as a different person and you know then it doesn't seem selfish and it can really set your day up right um does that make any sense? I don't know. Maybe you think I'm crazy. I, have I talked about anything artistic? No, no, I have not. Um, oh, so this this project right here, this will be up in, actually, it's probably up in Critique Club right now because I w actually was somewhat on the ball and I had that done. Uh, so that's up in Critique Club now. If you're a member, you can go check it out. If you're not a member and you don't know what it is, it's basically a, um, it's a group where if you want to grow as an artist, you can submit up to two um, original artworks a month, something you're working on or works in progress, whatever you need help with. Uh, you can upload it and then you can either ask questions about it or just ask for a critique. And I'll give you a a, um, an in-depth critique of what I think is great about it, what I think needs a little work, what I would do, what I would change, if anything. And um, and then, like, if it's a work in progress and you want to, like, you know, you can you can work on it and re-upload it and, you know, get some feedback along the way. It's just a way to help people grow as artists, no matter where you are in your journey. You could be a beginner, you could be uh, an experienced artist. It doesn't matter. It's just to help you grow where you're at. And there's also, I put two new tutorials every month. So there's... Um, Oh, there's a couple dozen up there now. Um, 
and these tutorials are longer, more in-depth, more like intermediate advanced tutorials. And they're the ones, they're, they're longer, and those longer tutorials don't do well on YouTube. People just don't care to watch, you know, long in-depth tutorial. They want quick and easy, you know, fast and fun. I can't blame them. I mean, people are watching YouTube to pass the time, kill a few minutes here and there. Um, so these longer tutorials do a lot better in Critique Club with people that are really interested in developing those skills. So if you're interested in that, it's $5 a month. You can... Um, check it out in the link in the video description. Um, many members just join for the tutorials because they like to see those ex those uh, those longer videos. Um, there's no requirement that you have to do anything. You know, it's whatever, make it how it's going to be most useful for you. And it's always nice to see what other people are working on, I think, because I find it inspiring because oftentimes I'll be looking at somebody's work and it's like, oh, I never thought to put those two medias together. That looks fantastic. Or I never thought of that as a subject. What a great idea. So it inspires us all and, um, and it's a lot of fun. And uh, I was just working on this. I was doodling around on this. Uh, block of watercolor paper that came in my smart art box. Um, I don't know. It was just kind of a warm-up piece today. I'm not really that thrilled with it, but it's one of those ones where I walked away and it came back and it wasn't so bad. Oh, oh, you sewers are going to love this. I struck gold today. I found this in my, I, we have a, um, I have my mother-in-law's sewing machine. It's from the Ooh, 50s, 40s, or 50s, um, and it's in like a cabinet. So we actually just use it as a stand because uh, it's it's kind of finicky. It's it's difficult to use. It doesn't have very many features, but um, but I kept it. It works. I you know I've oiled it and made it made sure it works and everything. Um, and in the in the cabinet is a place where you can put your bobbins and you know your presser foot and extra things. And I was cleaning out. Um, my jewelry box and for some reason I had some bobbins and the some extra presser foots for that so or presser feet so I took that back where it belongs and I found this and I can't believe that I had quarter inch sewing elastic because when I was making masks for everybody I had to use um I had to use bias tape to make the strings because I didn't have anything else that, could, that I could use and um I usually have a lot of elastic on hand but my daughter got my daughter Lila got into a big sewing uh, scrunchie phase and she totally used up all of my sewing elastic so I just was like oh struck gold man it's like finding flour at the grocery store during the pandemic it's like yes so I'm making some new masks because I am not in love with tying the strings this is gonna be a game changer so I'm gonna make my, make a make a few uh, because yeah you gotta wear your masks out it's so funny you know cuz like I live near Bangor Maine and the metropolis of Bangor Maine which if you've been to Maine, it is pretty much our metropolis, <laughs> unless, we, you know, Portland, obviously. But, like, you go to other parts of the state and, like, nobody's wearing masks. It's very, it's very interesting how, like, different parts of the state just, you know, they have a completely different ethos. Um, so, uh, so pretty much everyone in Bangor is wearing the masks, um, which is, which is great, I think, because it keeps other people, you know, you do this for others. It's not something you're doing for yourself. It's something you're doing for other people. And, um... Well, I'm not really going to get into it, but anyways, I, I, uh, I'm going to make some more because I prefer the elastic to the ties. It's uh, They're nicer because when we went out, went out on Monday, um, things were opening up. It was funny. There was an article in the paper that um, TJ Maxx was open and people were waiting in line for two and a half hours to go in to shop. You know, they just wanted that like scrap of normalcy. Um, and I can't blame them. I mean, never, I think everyone's kind of looking for something normal in their life. Uh, but I was like, wow, two and a half hours, and it was hot. This has been a really hot week. It was like 80-something. And I was really surprised that people were standing outside, especially Mainers. We're not used to this, you know, standing outside. They really they really wanted to uh, to check that stuff out. And uh, I drove by Marshalls, which is like TJ Maxx. I think, there's some, I think they're owned by the same company. And there was a big line around that. I don't know how long they waited to get in, but there was a, there was a big line. Um, went by the mall. Uh, my daughter had to return some shorts that didn't fit that they that she had bought, and um, it was like Dawn of the Dead. If you've ever seen that movie where like you know there's a zombie apocalypse and people are holed up in the mall, that's what it looked like. First of all, the Bangor Mall is very like potholy and ruddy and like just around it, it looks like it's been like abandoned. And then you go in and there's like it's there's like the music playing and there's nobody around. I'm like, oh my word, this is like the most dystopian thing I've ever seen. And um, and yeah, it was very very strange. But the only there was only a few stores open and the stores were being really good everyone had masks on and they were limiting it to like five people in the store at once um so you know i like seeing people being responsible i like that people that stores are able to be open and be able to try to survive um you know i'm not judging anybody for going out and shopping i'm not judging anybody for wanting to stay home you do you uh we're all just trying to get through this and i was feeling really sorry for myself i was walking this morning walking the dog and i was just like 
I, I just feel like I was really missing my friends. Um, I was really missing my friends that I go to the stamp show with every year. And of course, that's not happening. And even if it was, I'd probably feel a little uneasy about going uh, because it'd be going to like a much more populated area of the country. And um, and but anyway, it's just such a nice weekend because like you're just all you have to do is worry about getting yourself where you need to be. There's no stress. There's nobody else's schedules you have to worry about. You're just you know relaxing and enjoying and. Um, and I was just really craving that this morning because I'd been so just so stressed out all week. And um, and then I was like, oh, it's gonna be a whole other year. And then I'm like, well, I hope they still do them because you know the crowds get smaller and smaller. And I'm thinking about the consumer crafts thing and other stores are going under. And it's like, oh my gosh, what's this world gonna be like? What's it gonna be like next year? I don't know. I don't know what it's gonna be like. I hope it's good. I hope it things like bounce back um, with a, with gusto and. Um, and everybody is ready to get together and um, everybody's healthy and uh, and things go well. Oh, so this is interesting. Would be probably really interesting if, <laughs> if you live in a city because you'd probably be like, what the heck? But we've had a lot of bears in our town and um, right right over about, about an hour before I took the dog for a walk, there was a black bear spotted in um, this woman's yard right like at a house I walk by almost every day. And I mean, it was a black bear. It was the cutest thing. Um, but they have been like, they've, a lot of people have spotted them all over town. I figure it's going to be more than just one. Maybe it's just one that's just like really prolific, but, um, bird feeders have been like, have been ransacked and, um, I have this, um, there's a stump in the backyard. And so when I'm done dinner, uh, if there's leftovers that I don't think anyone's going to eat, I put them out for the crows, like rice or pasta or things that, you know, crows eat. And, um, I call it the crow stump and I'll call the crows and they'll like, they'll flap down and they'll eat, eat their pasta and berries or whatever. It's cute. I love crows. Um, and I was hearing this crashing around the other night and I'm wondering if it was a bear because like there was not a scrap of food on that crow stump in the morning. Usually there's a couple things left. Uh, so I'm wondering if that might've been a bear, but the cat was on the, uh, on the back balcony waiting to come in. So, cause I opened the door and I was hearing all kinds of crashes and I was like, Oh, I wonder if that was the bear. But it was funny cause I live in a very small town and, um, on our town's Facebook page, um, one of the, uh, there's a, there's a lady that likes to bake and she had posted that she had made strawberry rhubarb pies and she had put them on the, um, on the table at the end of her driveway with a jar for money. If anybody wanted to come and buy one, they could, um, they could, you know, come and pay and take a pie with them. And, you know, cause you, everything's on the honor system in Maine. It's like, you see that you'll be driving down the road and you'll see like a vegetable stand with just like a box with, you know, you, a slot on the top that you put money in. Um, a lot of times you can even open it up and make change. I mean, it's, this is how like, you know, how honor system and trusting, uh, folks folks in Maynard. Um, and all I can think is that a bear is going to come by and get into those pies. <laughs> and then the thought of like a grizzly bear covered in like strawberry rhubarb, just, oh, that's the cutest thing I can imagine. Of course, if I was outside and the bear came up to me, I don't know how cute I would find that. I don't even know what I would do if I've never encountered a bear. Uh, and I've lived in Maine my whole life. I've seen a moose once and that was like up at Baxter State Park. So, um, so I don't know what I would do in that situation. I think I'd probably back away slowly. I don't know. I should probably look, I should probably look up that scenario in my, um, worst case scenario book because I'm a hypochondriac and I have one of those, uh, and see what the proper precaution is. I don't know if you make a lot of noise and try to scare it off or you just try to like back away slowly. I know you shouldn't run. That's usually, uh, that's usually what you don't do with wild animals. But, uh, but yeah, we got bears, we got bears, we got bears everywhere in Maine right now. Um, let's see, is there anything? Oh, you know what? I'm gonna show you something that I, that I, that I salvaged and you can tell me what you would recommend me doing with it because I don't now think I'm questioning my sanity for saving this, but, um, but after the wiring was done in our addition, we had a bunch of wire left and I asked the electrician if he was going to take it. And he said, oh no, just throw it away. And I said, oh, can I have it? And he said, yeah, no problem. And so I have a bunch of copper wire. Some of it is just bare copper wire. Some of it needs to be stripped. I've got a box, well, I just grabbed a bunch of it. Um, so ideas, guys, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Uh, can you, can you see? I mean, it's pretty, it's, some of it is, um, I don't know, I think I picked stuff that was pretty straight. So I was thinking I might make some bubble wands or I was also thinking that maybe I would make a bubble wand and then make little craft kits of the bubble wand and kind of record a video and then drop the little craft kits off at the library so people in town, if they have kids at home, they could pick up a craft kit and take it home and follow the video because our, our library is doing curbside pickup and I think that's really awesome and I think it'd be cool to do something like that. So, um, so I don't know. That seems pretty ambitious for the likes of me these days, <laughs> especially 
especially after this week when I can't get out of my own way. But you know, I get these bursts of energy, and uh, and maybe that's something they'll want to do with it. I have like other things on my to-do list that I shouldn't be doing, other than making bubble wands. But um, I don't know what it is. It's like it's like if I see something that could be salvaged, I have to salvage it. I don't know what that is. Uh, but I don't like clutter, so it's like I want to salvage it, but then I got to decimate it somewhere else because I don't want the clutter here. Um, we all have our things, don't we? Uh, I think that's about all uh, I had to chat about today. Uh, I did some paint pouring earlier. I was having some issues. I was having a trouble getting cells. And um, and then I got the Arteza paint pouring paint. And that worked really well. And then I realized, you know, this is just fluid acrylic. But this is, like, way cheaper than typical fluid acrylic. So I'm like, you know, I think I need to, like, do some fluid acrylic stuff with that paint. Because I think it would work really well now. It's probably not light fast, but... Uh, but I don't know. I think that would be some fun experimenting. So that kind of got the ju the creative juices flowing. So that was nice. Um, I'm not. I'm not I think I'm a big fan of the paint pouring. Um, I have a client that makes silicone, um, like uh, machine oil and stuff. And I was just saying if there was something that I could do to to work that into a craft project versus just a maintenance project or you know a tool maintenance project. Um, so we'll see. I'm working on that. I, I always have a few little projects in the back burner for you know to putter away on when I'm, you know, scattered like I have been this week. So I hope you had a wonderful day. I hope you're having a good week. Uh, let me know how you're doing in the comments below. <laughs> let me know what to do if I encounter a bear, if you happen to know. And until um, next time, guys, happy crafting.